In this video, I will be explaining how I photograph birds from the sliding door leading to my deck where I have two bird feeders set up. Now this works out really good using the Nikon Z8 with the 70 to 200 2.8 Z zoom lens and the two-time teleconverter. I use area mode C1 with the smallest custom focus area selected and animal detection and I shoot at 10 frames per second. I had been shooting at 20 frames per second, but that just gives me too many images. So let me just explain my setup. This is my, the view from the sliding door looking at the deck. And you could see on the right there, there's a shepherd hook and I have a branch attached to that. Towards the center of the frame, a little bit to left the center, you could see another shepherd hook where the other end of the branch is. Right below that, you can see one of the bird feeders to the left is a feeder with the suet. So that's my setup. And here's a close-up of the right side there showing how that branch is attached with cable ties to the shepherd hook. Sometimes it slides out. I just slide it right back in. And now we're looking at towards the center left, and you can see the one bird feeder. And by the time I shot that picture, it was empty. And here is how the bird feeder is attached. I attached a hook to one of the branches with some cable ties. And here is the suet. And that is attached with the cable tie to one of the branches. So this, this works out really nice from my back door. And here I am. And that piece of wood you see there uh, towards the bottom, that is a 1x12 that I stick in the door because we have two cats. I don't need the cats running out. And uh, that gives me about 11 inch wide area to work from. And using a monopod, and you know, right here, I, again, I have the uh, 70 to 200 28 with the teleconverter. And I am about 15 feet from that, from the suet. And that's at a slight angle. It's, a sl it's slightly to my left as I shoot. And the center of the perch of that branch that I have, that's about 14 feet. Now, one of the nice things about this setup is all the trees that we had planted back there, those trees were planted a while back, I'm going to say between 10 and 12 years ago, maybe even a little longer. Uh, of course, the birds like the trees, they're in the trees a lot, and when I shoot pictures of the birds in the trees, you know, you don't even know it's a backyard. I could be out in the wild somewhere. But of course, we have furniture on the deck, and the birds like to hang out on the furniture. And when they do, I am actually closer uh, to them, a little bit closer to them. And most of these images you see here were shot um, at an equivalent of about 340 millimeters of, of these two birds on the uh, wicker furniture. And this is a case where it would have been nice if I was shooting at a higher frame rate because everything was happening so quick. Now, one thing when shooting more than one bird with the focus point that I have selected, it's going to be on one bird. And therefore, sometimes the other bird, depending on my aperture, will not be in sharp focus. So it's always best in a situation like that is to focus on the closest bird, use the smallest aperture you can with, of course, a fast enough shutter speed when they're moving quickly, and uh, you stand a better chance of having the bird that's slightly further away in focus because there's always more depth of field behind the focus point than in front of. And another thing, I mean, I was shooting uh, at an angle on some of these shots because the birds were mostly to my left. If I had been shooting straight on and they had been right next to one another, then they both would have been more likely in focus. So I really like the way it looks with the birds against the tree. This guy is in one of the little giant arborvitaes. I think that's what they're called. I know what some of these birds are. I got to brush up on, uh, you know, what species they are, these are, what type of birds they are. Now you can see this area to the left. 
it's kind of washed out slightly. That is the uh, side of the door frame because uh, I was trying, the bird was pretty much to my left and I'm turning the camera and I was picking up some of the autofocus door frame. This one is pretty decent even though they're not exactly uh, on the same plane but they're both in pretty good focus. I'm really happy as I said before with this combination. I am sure, in fact I know for a fact that the 404.5 or the new 180 to 600 at 400 is going to be sharper, but the sharpness is pretty good with this lens combination, with this lens and teleconverter combination, again giving me a maximum of 400 millimeters. And almost all these pictures that you're seeing here were shot at 6.3. Now you're going to see some vertical shots here. I kept the camera at horizontal and I just cropped. Uh, and I was in DX mode for all these images. It gives you a 19.5 meg megapixel image. It gives you the field of view of a 600 millimeter lens when you are at 400 with the uh, zoom at its maximum of 200 with the teleconverter. It's the same as if I had been shooting in FX mode, at, in full frame mode, at 400, and then cropping. But you will also get a little bit more depth of field using DX mode. Depth of field will extend a little bit more. Also, using a 600 millimeter lens on the Z8, of course you have, in full frame mode, you would have 45 megapixels to work with as opposed to using a 400 to give you equivalent 600 millimeter. In DX mode, you'd only have 19 and a half megapixels to work with. Also, the fact that you were shooting full frame, you would also have less noise. And of course, you could also crop quite a bit more since you'd be working with that 45 megapixel image. Now this is Chippy, our little friend Chipmunk, who kind of sneaks in all the time and eats a lot of the bird seed. And he's always hanging out on that bird feeder. I've yet to get, him, uh, get a shot of him uh, running around the deck. Of course, anytime I see him on the deck, uh, I don't have my camera at hand. Now, of course, I know this is a Blue Jay. And... Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's just the same one, but I, I, I don't know. It, it, I've never seen more than one. And, of course, very colorful. Looks good against the green background. And I really am happy we decided to plant those trees years ago. And we did not plant the trees with the intention of photographing birds. It was just to give us some privacy. There's another house behind us and uh, just to, you know, give it a little more uh, privacy. And, but it worked out now that I'm trying to do this bird photography and I'm learning quite a bit. It's not easy. I mean, the camera makes it easier focusing on the eyes. Uh, it usually picks up the eye of the bird unless it's a real dark bird or the light is really low. And I, I, I no way could I have done this well with let's say the Z6 um, because even if I am off a little bit with the focus point it seems to pick up the eye and also the high ISO on this camera is excellent not as good as the Z6 I will say the Z6 is definitely better but I've shot some of these images actually at 12,800 and then I used Lightroom's Denoise. It's a new feature in Lightroom. It's called Denoise. You just click on that. It brings up the image. You select the amount of correction that you want. And it takes about a minute and it does a really nice job. I would say it kills sharpness just a little bit, not much at all. And it's, it's a great new feature. With Lightroom, it allows you to use higher ISOs than you normally would. Now, I prefer, of course, to keep the ISO as low as possible for the highest possible quality. But none of these images here were shot at anything below about 2,000 
ISO. It was a cloudy day. Actually, these images you're seeing here were shot over a period of two days. This one is cropped in quite a bit. Um, really like the, the cardinal with the green background. Really stands out. But So these were shot over the period of two days. It was cloudy and also very cool for June in South Jersey. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I usually come out with a new video every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. I will talk to you next time.